like how to put your portfolio together, which is really important for kids that are going to art school, right? They need this like dynamic portfolio. Um, we also have um, the week after Diwali, we have um, an engineer coming in to talk about prosthetic hands. Um, we have another aeronautical engineer coming in. We have a few lawyers coming in talking about human rights, international relations. Um, we have a robotic seminar that's coming up, which I'm very excited about. I kind of elbowed my way into that one. Um, pharmacy. Pharmacy. Oh, and the pharmaceutical, um, uh, a pharmaceutical professor who I heard <coughs> speak when we were in Australia, and he's fantastic. So even if you're not interested in pharmacy, um, it's it's a really an interesting conversation. So we try to get the kids um, talking to universities as early as ninth grade, um, and we have university reps come from all over the place. The majority are from the U.S. because universities send reps from the U.S. Like the, the U.S. universities do that. But we also, anybody who contacts us, we invite in. So, so far we've had reps from Canada, the UK, France, uh, Dubai, Hong Kong, Australia, India, which is very exciting because the Indian universities are starting to send representatives. And there's some really great Indian universities opening up, which is exciting. Um, so yeah, we, we, uh, we're really open, our doors are open. We constantly have things going on in our office. Um, I send out huge emails with everything that's going on. Um, we have a format called Enmodo where we're always sending out information to the kids. Um, and it's all included in tuition, of course. This is a list of all of this stuff that the kids do on the left-hand side. It's a lot longer than the list of what we do. Um, but I do think that what we do is super important. Um, you know, the teachers are right down the hallway, so if they're missing a recommendation letter, we can run down and remind them. Um, if we need uh, transcripts made, Olka and I can make them. If um, we need predicts for the UK or Canada, we've got those at our fingertips. So um, we're constantly working. Right now we have a November 1st deadline coming up, which a lot of our kids are applying to. So if we look a little frazzled, that's why. Um, but again, we work with your children to make sure that they're in control of this journey. And um, we need our parents to sort of understand that. Because for some parents, this is really comfortable. And for other parents, this is a little scary. Um, so when you sign up to be part of OIS, uh, this is the expectation. The other thing is, um, because we're in-house and we are very good at what we do, if I can say that, um, you don't need to work with outside counselors, which is fantastic. Um, our workload is um, very doable. I mean, we're busy right now, don't get me wrong, but it's very doable. And um, I meet with my students for 20 minutes every week. And it might not sound like a lot, but it is. Because when I talk to my friends who are counselors in Mumbai, uh, they're very jealous of the time that we get with our kids. Um, the other thing that we get to do is during homeroom time, which meets almost once a week, uh, if we ever want to meet with the students, we never have anybody complain that we're taking them. So yesterday I met with all the grade nine students and we took the first assessment that was talking about um, the learning environment that's best for them. So they took an online assessment and figured out, you know, do they like bright lights or dim lights? Do they like to lay on the floor, or sit at a table, that kind of thing. Uh, so yeah, I never have any complaints when I want to work with the kids. Is it for me? Just the last little bit uh, in terms of the process, uh, we are looking at, um, well actually, admissions, Archie, do you want to talk a little bit yeah. about this? So, um, for the admissions for grade 9, um, you have to fill up the online uh, registration link which is on the school website, I think most of you have already done that. And uh, going further ahead, uh, you can purchase, uh, you can procure the application form by paying the application fee of 7500 so we have the entire process online, the application form will be online. You will be uploading the documents and submitting all the student relevant details um, into the portal itself. And uh, we have already shared the assessment dates, there are four assessment dates where you can come in for uh, the assessments and uh, it's there along with the timing in, in the application form itself. So you can submit that and then we will touch base with you with any further queries that you have. We do have... Uh Interaction dates are a little uh, flexible right now. We're not sure. We may be able to do interactions. Uh, these are the interviews. Interviews. Uh, before winter break, we, I think our last day of school is December 21st, or we may need to push that back into January before we, uh, we can get folks in to interview. It's a very small group, though, for grade 9 is what it's looking like. So uh, my guess is that's something we can do during December. And then uh, 
Early December. Yeah, early December. And then possibly make a, a decision on emissions before we move uh, forward to the report. Any questions? Yes. So you had the IBTP program. If you were a student there, uh, you really had to hope that you passed, that you earned the IB diploma. Because if you didn't, the school was not authorized to issue a, a high school diploma that would be recognized um, in, a, in a country like the US, which is where a lot of the students went to school, went to pursue um, admission anyway. So this is, I mean, we call it our backup plan. But it, it's not really, it's extremely important. It's not something that you get by default. The, the only, and, and again, we always struggle with how to, how to describe it. Essentially, you're using the IGCSE courses in grades nine and 10, and the IB courses, DP courses in grades 11 and 12, to satisfy the requirements of the OIS high school diploma. So as long as you pass your courses and earn your credits, then you will, you will get that diploma. I think both is it correct to say it's very rare for a student here to not get the OIS high school diploma? Uh, in fact, no, never, never. 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 And so that's a record of the, the grades that they earned at the school, whereas the IB diploma is a record of the grades that they earned on the IB exams, the IB's external moderating course. I had a question. Yes. Uh, my daughter is in the Indian So in the past, yes, we've done a math assessment. We may do a math placement test once the student is admitted, okay. just to figure out where their math level is. Uh -huh. But in terms of the actual admissions assessment, mm -hmm. we wanted something that more reflects what it is that we do here. Okay. And so um, that is moving away from a, a very strictly defined subject by subject assessment, and more so looking at the overall skill base of the student in those particular areas. So this would be when we come here. The student would have to come here to take the test. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And the other thing I just I, I I hope I didn't I hope I didn't allude to this during my presentation. Yes, we are phasing out IGCSE. However, I don't want anybody in here to get the impression that your student is coming into a program that we're sort of like, well, you know, it's ending anyway, so we're really not going to put much effort and much resources into it. That is absolutely not the case. Um, and so, yes, we will see this program out. Um, however, your students, your children will be the last group to be admitted to go through the IGCSE program. They, are, they will not be shortchanged in any way. So I just want to make sure that's, that's clear. And you can see a clear progression to how you know, they are trained. You know, the entire teaching learning and the teachers basically focus on the skill that they And this you will see that how well they do when it comes to IDT. So that's always, you know, at the 
back of their mind, be it CAS, those. So we have a lot of student-led initiatives which is taking place, you know, at grade 9 and 10 level. So they are preparing themselves for the CAS activities when it comes to um, EP. Also, you know, the extended essay, when it comes to extended, extended essay, which is a core element, we train our students to write research papers, you know, in different subjects. So, you know, everything is kept in mind because we want to give a very easy progression of the EP learning. Yeah, we spoke about the, the, the school diploma, is that the IP diploma? Does it mean the student has to take two separate exams? No, no. no. So can, I, can I just help you? So as a student in any school would be doing a curriculum in grade 9 and 10 and then sitting for the end of your exam as a board exam for your grade 10 or CPSE, the format is the same. The student is still learning the same subjects. The student is learning the subjects in different methods of formative subjects. There is a continuous assessment happening which turns out to be the report cards or the transcripts. And we are preparing the students to sit for the IB diploma exam at the end of grade 12, which is the IB diploma exam that they will be going to have to do. But this leads to the two years of also getting the OMS high school diploma, which is, I would say, a, a transcript for grade 11 and 12 students. So the kids will take um, our exams at the end of grade 9, yes. right? And then at the end of grade 10, they take the IG exams. But the OIS diploma has nothing to do with the IG exams, yes. right? It only depends on how they did throughout the year in grade 9 and throughout the year in grade 10. Yes. And then at the end of grade 11, they take our exams again at the, at the end. And then at the end of grade 12, they take the IB exams. But again, OIS diploma is only based on what they did for our school. So the stuff they did in grade 9, 10, but not the IG exams, and then the stuff they did in 11 and 12, but not the IB exams. So we don't really even, we do mocks at the end of grade 10 and at the end of grade 12. And those are part of us, right? Because that's kind of like our final exam, but they're not, um, but it's, it's based on everything they've done throughout the four years in order to get our diploma. It's not one exam, which I know is different than the Indian system. We believe, um, because we're sort of on the American sort of system, is that it's much more important what you've done throughout the four years, not just a three-year exam. Another, um, I had another question. I know you're pretty stringent when it comes to grades and cut off grades for the younger grades. Does the same rule apply out here? Oh, for the uh, age-based admissions? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So basically, we are looking at um, child should be at least um, so got 15 years of age, correct me if I'm wrong, for IT. For no, 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 no. Let's talk about the IT. No, no, no. 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 Yeah. <laughs> for IT. So, what matters the most is the OIS assessments, which is on a continuous basis, which reflects their learning all the time. And the mock examination, which he was talking about, again, it is a kind of a summative assessment like a big exam but we provide the experience and how the exam would look like and how the entire experience you know would come like to them so they're, they're ready to take the final examination yeah? yes um, you know, we're looking at the 11th grade I just wanted to understand how that element is being 
it's just that as we keep saying that, but if a student is, is joining us in grade 11 from any other school, we are expecting the students to give us all the documentation that the staff will be admission, so we are able to process this by the end, by the end of grade 12, 11, so we can have the students to take that Yes. So I think we'll we'll think long and hard about the results that we're seeing, and and then making a judgment as to whether or not, or the extent to which that student can be successful in our school. So you would not only have an uh, you know assessment, you would also have an interaction with the students. Absolutely. Yeah. I think I think we can do that for a group this small. Uh, we haven't done that in the past. We have used the assessment as a uh, as a screening tool. Right, and so, um, but I, I don't know. I mean, we we have a very. We, I mean, we will be looking at the school records. Yeah. Just like in making sure, so we are not kind of just relying on a single test, uh, you know, admission format. Because we have done that in the past, and like you rightly said, there are kids coming from ICSC or CBSC. Very often on their like math paper, they would write, you know, I've not studied this at my previous school, or I'm not out of portion, or you know, things like that. That's the reason why now we are uh, you know, moving to a skill-based uh, assessment. Mm -hmm. So I mean, to be honest, if I were to describe it, it's like a one-hour you know online uh, you know, game, which kind of takes the kids through some you know different uh, different situations. Kids are actually possibly better at that. And uh, but the information that we the results that we get out of it is it kind of tells us whether they have certain attributes such as information literacy, mm -hmm. research, you know, to the research skills, critical thinking, problem solving. So the results don't come to us in the form uh, format of math and science. Right. But it's a skill-based, uh, you know, like result that we would get. But I mean, we do understand that you know kids come from different boards, so obviously they know, uh, like Steve said, so it's not content testing mm -hmm. because that's our responsibility. You know, we just want to make sure that your kid has some of the skills that uh, you know he would require because we now look at it as 9, 10, 11, 12, right? When you're yes. making this plan, right. we're looking at the next four years. We want to make sure you know that it has like the attributes, the skills, you know, a, a kind of an orientation which will help them over the uh, over four years. Because in our experience, you know, we've had different things. We've had kids who've done extremely well in ICSC. I remember there was this kid two years ago. He scored 100 in his ICSC math paper, but he struggled in uh, you know with math in the IE. And uh, so there are no guarantees that you know if you success in one program mm -hmm. could you know, lead to success in the other program. So in fact, sometimes I think if we don't admit uh, your kid is, uh, you know, maybe it's a good thing because we 
know, maybe it's possibly a different, you know, part or a different you know, course. But I wouldn't be anxious about the admission test. No, yeah. I think I can be anxious my daughter. Yeah, so that's sure. great. <laughs> that's great. So go with that. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Thank you.